Aleluia. Amen, amen. We thank God for everyone who is here already. And uh, also we are live on Facebook. On Facebook, can you hear me? If someone can hear me on Facebook, please let me know. Let me know that you hear me clear. Can you hear me if you're on Facebook? Can Facebook hear me clear? Someone on Facebook, let me know if you can hear me clear, if my voice is clear. Please let me know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, tonight, I want to speak about a subject called the right ground. And before I do that, I want to get, you know, listen to prayer. And uh, I want to give you guys a chance. Please invite your friend, invite everybody. Because uh, they will be blessed by this teaching that I'm about to do right now. So please invite someone, text someone, text someone real quick, do this real quick. God bless you guys, Pastor Bernard. So invite someone, share, share the Facebook post. As I'm about to get to, it's going to be a blessing, this word I'm about to share with you. It's going to be a blessing for some of you. And let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you in the name of Jesus. As we gather in this, at this moment, Lord, to praise your name or to learn from you, Father, we pray that you help us, Lord. I pray, Father, that you put words of counsel, words that will help us, words that will heal us, words, Father, that will build us to a higher standard that we may get closer to you, Father, and to your purpose. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Um, I, I mentioned I want to talk about the right ground. There's the right ground, there's the wrong ground. There's all type of ground, ground, even the right ground, you'll find that, that there are subgrounds. It means that this ground may be fruitful for this and not fruitful for that. And uh, let's, uh, uh, let's go to the scripture. We're going to read a few verses. But my key verse is in Matthew chapter 13. Key verse is in Matthew 13. And you can read the whole story for yourself. It's a story when Jesus gave a parable, a parable about a sower. It said that there's a sower that went out and then to sow seed. And then for some reason, the seed that he sowed, some fall into the right ground and wrong ground. Now there are different grounds that they talk about in the in the script in the scripture. You know, um, the fa farmer went out to sow seed. As he was um, scattering the seed, some fell along the path. That's one, and bir and the birds came and ate them. Some fell in the rocky place, where uh, uh, where it did not have much soil. There was not much soil in the rocky place when the Seed fell in the rocky place. That's the second ground. And it sprang quickly, and because the soil was short, was shallow, but when the sun come up, the plant was scotch. And the weeder, because they had no roots. Verse 7, Matthew, remember we read it in Matthew, Matthew 13. Verse 7 said, All the seed fell in the thorns, were, which grew up and chopped, the plants. The thorns choke the plant. Verse 8. Still other seal, um, seed fell on the good soil where it produces a crop. And 160 and 30 or 30 times what was sown. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. Some fall along the path. Some fall in the rocky ground. Some fell in, 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 you know, in, in the, uh, the thorns, 
and some other seed, they fell into the right ground. And even in the right ground, the Bible said some, they produce hundred, some sixty, or thirty times more. Even in the right ground, they produce different ways. Some hundred, some sixty, some thirty. Please follow this. You're going to understand. There's a deep, deep revelation in this. Why? Because what I do in life, what get me somewhere, you can try the same thing. It may get you somewhere and it may not get you where you're supposed to be. Certain things that someone do in life that can get them to be success, successful, but you may try the exact same thing, but for some reason, it doesn't work for you. Not everything someone do, and then you're going to try to do it and expect to have result. Expect to have result like that person has result. So, although the seed falls into the right ground, and it still doesn't, it still doesn't uh, uh, multiply the same way. Because my ground is not your ground. Your ground is not someone else's ground. Now, we're going we're gonna to go somewhere with this. Let's read Matthew 13, verse 11. Verse 11, in the same chapter. It says, And he answered, he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them he has not been given. That was an answer of Jesus to the disciples when they asked him, Master, why do you speak in parables? Why do you speak in such ways that we cannot understand? Why do you speak that way? Because you're saying seed, falling grounds, and this and that. Jesus said, the reason I speak that way, because these people, I don't want them to understand a lot of things. But you, I explain the parables to you. I teach you about these things, the secret. Because to you, the secret has been given. Secret of the kingdom has been given to you, but not to them. To you, the secret has been given and not to them. Is everybody here with me? On Facebook, please hit share. Please hit share if you're on Facebook. On the prayer line, please invite someone. Please, please, we're going to go somewhere. Mm. Please, if you're on Facebook, hit share as well. So, to them, to the disciples, the secret of the kingdom has been given. But not to everyone. The secret has been given to the disciples, but not to everybody. Please understand. So it means there are things they will understand. Because they were followers of Jesus. See, there are certain things you are seeking, but it is all about, are you in the right ground? The disciples, they were in the right ground. They grounded in Jesus. It means that they were called to be Jesus. If you read scripture, you will see that uh, 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 John the Baptist, he had his own disciples as well. And the disciples that John the Baptist had, they would never follow Jesus. Although a few of them left him and be with Jesus. All, the Bible said when John was in prison, his disciples went to Jesus and, and asked him, Are you the one to come? The disciples went. Although John was in prison, they remained faithful, in, faithful with John. Because this, is, this was the foundation. That's what, it was the ground. That's how they grew up. This is, what God, this is where God placed them to be. See, when you place into the wrong ground, it's impossible for you to bear fruits. If you are a Christian that is going to church, and yes, you are shouting, you are doing all these kind of things. Your, your emotions, you know, is going crazy, all kind of things. But for some reason... Three, six months down the road, you have nothing to show with your spiritual life. It means that something is wrong with your ground. Something is truly wrong with your ground. The Bible talks in the book of Acts chapter 22 verse 3. A man called Paul before was Saul. And Saul, you have to understand, Saul was learning from one of the most knowledgeable men at the time. Gamaliel. This man, he was the most knowledgeable man. It was someone that everyone, they want to be under his rank. 
everybody want to be under Gamaliel because he was the most knowledgeable man. He was very, he was the most popular man. He knows the laws. He knows everything, and and he was well educated. See, even when Paul was under this man, Paul was zealous. Paul wanted to learn. Paul wanted to become something. The talent, although Paul was zealous, although Paul wanted to become something, it was, it didn't help Paul to become who Paul was supposed to be. Gamaliel could not help Paul for Paul to become the apostle he was going to be that's going to preach the gospel all over the world. <laughs> but yet he was the most knowledgeable man at the time. So how come he couldn't help Paul to become one of the greatest apostles? See, although he was knowledgeable, but that ground, it wasn't meant for Paul to be. Instead, that knowledge, Paul was doing the wrong thing with it. Paul was killing Christians. He couldn't understand scriptures the right way. Paul was doing the wrong thing with what he, whatever he was learning. Paul was very zealous. He wanted to do something for God. But yet he was doing it the wrong way, although he had a great mentor. Because that wasn't Paul's ground. This is not where God called Paul to be. See, when you are not where you call to be, even your mentor, even your men of God is great. There's no way they can help you. <laughs> I don't know if I'm speaking to someone here today. I don't know if I'm saying something here. I don't know if I'm saying something here. Oh, I got people on the prayer line, they're not answering to me. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody on the prayer line? See, although the mentor, uh, Paul had a great mentor, but this man couldn't help Paul at all. There's no way. Because that ground, it wasn't meant for Paul. Although he was the most knowledgeable man, he was the greatest man. He was one of the greatest law men at the time. Greatest Pharisees or Sadducees, whatever he was at the time. But yet, he, Paul was misleading. Why? Not because this man wasn't great. But because we all call to a certain ground. We all call to be in a certain position in life. And whenever we are not in the right position, there's no way for us to grow. See, the same tree that is giving you fruit in this ground, the same ground that is helping this fruit to give you I mean that is helping this tree to give you fruit you can sow I mean you can plant you can you can put certain other trees in that same ground and that ground kill those trees because there are certain, there's a ground for every tree there's certain places that coconut tree will grow there are certain places you find mango tree they will grow but yet if you plant another tree there there's no way they're gonna grow See, we are all built to grow in certain places. Every one of us. If you're on Facebook, please hit share. Hit share on Facebook if you're there. Please. So, there are certain places this tree will grow, but that one will not grow. Why? Because the ground is made for this tree, but the ground cannot help this other tree. The same way, John the Baptist he missed the certain people that used to follow him. For example, the two first disciples of Jesus Christ, the two sons of Zebedee, they left John the Baptist to went with Jesus. Why? Because they were following him for a period of time, but they were waiting on the right person to, uh, you know, the right person they needed to follow in order to become who they are supposed to be. Now, the question is, wherever you, you are planted right now, are you bearing the fruits that you need to bear? Or you feel like there's something that is coming out of you. Or you feel like your dreams are coming to pass. See, being zealous or being, you know, and thinking about this is what I want to do. You know, I want to become this. It's not helping. Paul wanted to help the gospel. Paul wanted to do something for God. But that wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for the gospel. He had to meet the right person. See, there's a right ground. Whenever Paul... Paul, he had in, he encountered with Jesus. The Bible said in, 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 his, in his path, when, whenever he was going to do whatever he was going to do, kill the Christian. 
And he met with Jesus on the path. And this is where his life changed. See, there's a way, there's somewhere that God wants you to be. If you're going to bear fruits. That's the reason you find people in church for 20 years. And nothing ever happened with their lives. And until they make a certain move, they be in a certain place. And they find themselves, you know, understanding that this is who I am. I need to do this, I need to do that. See, not every ground can help you. And it's not because the soil at this place is bad. But it may not be good for you. Because the scripture we just read in the book of Matthew 13 said, Even in the right ground, even the seed that fall in the right soil, some of them they bear hundred, some thirty, some sixty. Based on, that, based on the seed that is sowing, we all different. See, someone be, may be able to help you very well, but in, in, in that person is unable to help me. But does it mean the person is a bad person? No, it's not that. Who we follow means a lot. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15, I want to read it. Read, I want to re read this verse for you. 15 and 16 said, For though we, are, we have countless guides in Christ, we do not have many fathers. For I become your father in Christ through the gospel, I urge you then, be imitators of me. Paul was telling his children in the Lord to imitate his faith. Because you may have many people giving you guidance, but you only have one spiritual father. That's what he said. That's what Paul said. You only have one father. And that person, as you imitate that person, and that's how you, you bear your own fruit. Now, you have um, the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 13. It says, Now when they saw the, the boldness... Of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men they were ast astonished and they recognized that they had been with Jesus now the Bible said Peter and John they look at them they said these guys we don't know them they don't go to our school they un uneducated people they just common men how come they have so much knowledge how come they, they know so much things? And the Bible said, and they recognized that these men, they were with Jesus. See, because they were following Jesus, although they're great people that think they had knowledge, when they saw this when they said, those men, they don't have education. But yet they have great knowledge. How come they have boldness and that kind of knowledge? And the Bible said, they said, because now we know why. Because they were following Jesus. See, because they were following Jesus, although Jesus wasn't there anymore. And because of who they were following, because of the ground, they were planted. And they start bearing crazy food like foods or fruits like Jesus because they were, they, they were planted in the right ground. See, Jesus didn't have to be here for people to recognize this man they had knowledge. Although, Let's put it that way. People with the greater school, they look at them, they say, no, they, they haven't been to our school. How come these men, they know so much? How come these men, they so smart? Because they never been to our school. And they recognize that they were with Jesus. See, where you planted, it means a lot for your life. Who you going to be. And there's a right ground for everybody. Now the question is, are you planted in the right ground? Do you know the same people, they have said the same thing for Jesus. They were asking Jesus, Yo, he, he doesn't go to our school. You know, uh, um, so where, where, where did, what school that Jesus went to? In the book of John 7, 15, the Bible said the Jews, therefore marvelous, they marveled, saying, how is, how is it that this man has learning when he has never studied? They said, he never been to our school. That they're talking about Jesus. Jesus never been to our school. How come he knows so much stuff? Hmm. Because Jesus was planted in his father's ground, which was God. And the disciples planted in Jesus' ground. See, who you going to become, it depends on the ground that you're planted. Now, I want your attention there. Who you going to become tomorrow, it depends on the ground that you're planted. See, the, the thing is, 
people are looking at what is, is you know, you know, things that captivate eyes. For example, oh, this man is on TV. You know, he's mentoring me. He's on TV and this and that. The man may be on TV. He may be doing this. He may be doing that. He may be well known in the whole world. But who knows if he's the right ground for you? That's where a lot of people fall. Oh man, this, this guy, he's my mentor and he has a lot of money. He has a lot of this. Yes, this man, he may make it because he was in the right ground himself. But the question is, are you grounded in the right position for you yourself to bear the fruits that you need to bear? See, if you look at your spiritual life, you're struggling with your spiritual life. Your prayer life, you're struggling, not just struggling, but you don't have no desires. There's no dreams going within you. When I say dreams, you don't feel like you want to become anything, nothing. You don't think about the gifts, you don't think about that you yourself, you have to achieve something. Or you are, even when you're thinking about them, even when you're thinking about them, but for some reason, you don't see how you will become anything. Three months in the church, six months, eight months, two years. You have nothing to show. As a Christian, I'm telling you, you need to question the ground that you're, you're, you're that the, the ground. You need to question your own ground. Because something is wrong with your ground if you are not bearing fruits. If not, you, it's either you're not learning the right way, you choose not to learn, or you are not in the right ground. Because when someone is planted in the right ground, for some reason, you have to find yourself becoming different. You have to find yourself doing things, seeing things differently than you used to see them before. You have to find yourself changing your ways. You have to find yourself understanding other things. You have to find yourself want to become like your mentor. You have to find yourself want to achieve more. That's the, that's, those are the signs that shows that when you are planted in the right ground. Imagine a, man, a, a, a mango tree can only dream about giving fruits but never give it, bearing any fruits. The mango tree knows I'm a mango tree. My job, I'm going to bear fruit. My job is to bear mango. But for some reason, not once, no one ever sees no mango in you. What kind of mango tree are you? See, the script, scripture refer to any barren tree is cursed. The Bible said Jesus cursed the fig tree because although it was in the season, although the fig tree was green, green means although you're worship, you're praying, but if there's no fruit inside of you, there's no way God don't need you. You have to understand your greenness means nothing. It's the fruits that we look at. It's not about being green. It's not about go tall. It's about bearing fruits. That's the reason never find yourself in the ground that's only keeping you green. You have to find yourself in a place where you fulfill destiny. Destiny means if you're a mango tree, you have to start giving mangoes. If you're a coconut tree, you have to, people have to be able to find coconut from you. Someone has to say, so-and-so spoke to me. I was blessed by, the, by her words, by his word. Because why? That's who you are. You're supposed to be able to impact people's life with your own nature. That's how you know you're growing. That's how you know you're bearing fruits. If no testimony is coming because of you, if no one is following your footsteps, if no one is looking at you and is reading the, the Bible of your life, something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. you now I believe the book of Hebrews chapter 5 explains when we were supposed to be mature, but yet these people still drinking milk. It said milk is for baby. It's not for mature. I believe Hebrews five thirteen. Milk is for is for those who are babies. So does the age that you get, you can keep drinking milk. That's the reason when the seed fall, when the seed fall on the, on certain grounds, and that's the reason some grounds there's no way for that seed to become to grow. If you fall in the path side. See, there are some, some mentors. For you, they're just only the path side. There are certain places you are. You're on a thorny, thorny ground. It means that by the time you grow, by the time you grow, 
in, 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 in your fruit. There's no way for you to bear fruits. Because on a thorny ground, it's impossible. See, you find some people, they start growing. And they get to a point and they stop growing. You, you find people like that. They started really well. And they start growing. And they just stop growing. Some people, they start growing. But because they fall in the rocky ground, there's no way for them to have roots. They never have roots. People without roots, they are the people. They know about the Bible. Oh, you talk to them about salvation, they'll talk to you. Oh, you talk to them about righteousness, they'll talk to you. You talk to them about God, they'll talk to you. But for some reason, for some reason, they never find themselves understanding the purpose in life. If you ask them, who are you? They say, oh, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. they all over the place. They never take roots in anything. There's no roots. These people, they're not stable at all. They all over the place. They're just Christian. Just Christian. That's it. But you, they don't know that's the path to follow in this life. Life is not something you drive everywhere you go. Wanna, you just keep on driving. Imagine someone get in a car and start driving with no address. See, someone with no address is someone with no roots. If you don't have no roots, I'm telling you, you are very confused. People like that are very confused. They pray, yes. They read the Bible, yes. But when you look at them, you don't see there's nothing specific about their lives. That's the reason when you look at Paul, you see a man of faith, a man of healing. And scripture refers to everyone in the Bible as something. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, they talk to about Abraham, a man of faith. A man of faith. You will see all of them. David, a man of God's heart, based on a certain reaction, and they name these people a certain way. But for some reason, why? They had deep roots in whatever they were doing. They have deep roots. Moses, a friend of God, the only man that ever spoke to God face to face, and God, the only guy that God, only man that God never spoke to in riddles. That's what scripture, scripture says. God spoke to everyone in riddles, in ways they cannot understand. But Moses, as for Moses, I speak to Moses, clear. <laughs> the only person God spoke clear to, Moses, is the only man. See, but when, you, when we look at you, what do you have going on? What kind of roots that you take in that ground that you are at? And for you to see yourself going in this path, in a certain path, to become something your what specific dreams do you have i'm not saying someone that is thinking you know uh, um someday i'm gonna become something and that is confused but someone that know for a fact although i'm struggling in this although i'm struggling in that but i know i'm gonna become this one day i know that god's going to use me in this specific area someday that is someone that is taking roots in the ground if you don't see yourself that way, how can you bear fruits? A tree that bears fruits has to first take roots in the ground. Without roots in the ground, tree never never bear fruits. If you cannot take roots in the ground, you will only grow tall with green leaves. People will look at you so beautiful, but they will never know what kind of tree you are. Because it takes it takes the fruit for them to know. And it takes you to deep in the ground for you to take roots now if you're on the rocky ground you would not last it's impossible for a tree to last if the tree doesn't have roots no way what about when strong winds come what about when tornadoes when what all kind of things happen in this life how can you remain strong and firm see the secret is it's not what you see is going up. It's what's going underneath the ground. Let me say that again. That's the reason never look at the person's life based on what you see, based on the smile, based on what they are driving, based on the job they have. It's what's going on behind the scene under the ground. That's what allow a person to last in this life. If you have no roots, if you are a person with no roots, it's impossible for you to make it in this life.
You may be, it may feel like you have money now. It may feel like everything is going well now. It may feel like you have a smile in your face today. But it's impossible for that smile to remain on your face. If you don't have no roots. Because it has nothing to do with what's up there. But it's what's down there. How much roots do you have? When strong winds come, when certain situations come. That's the reason people become broke overnight. That's the reason people was going well. Everything was well for them at one point, And at another point, everything just collapsed. Job said something. He said, what I fear the most, that's what happened to me. Because Job didn't take roots in something. Job was scared so much about things to happen to him in life. And what he was afraid of happened. And that's the reason Job had to learn from his own life. He had to learn to understand that, you know, when I'm grounded in God, it's about what God says. If I have deep roots in this, I have deep roots in God. That I don't have to worry about the storms. Because even when the storms come, even if it feels like I lose my, 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 you know, the, 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 my edge or the top of the tree, even you feel like I, I fall, but don't worry, I have roots on the ground, I'm going to grow again. But if you don't have roots on the ground, you fall, you down in life. See, that's the reason it's very important where you act. Find me someone that was in church and that just get up and leave church. I will find you someone without roots. Because it requires roots for you to remain faithful in God. It requires deep roots for you to remain stable. Stable. Because some people, they are only Christian when things are okay. Why? Because they don't have roots. Everything is okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, God is good. God is good. Because thing is good. God is good. No, they don't tell you the whole story. Thing is good. God is good. That's what they want to say. But the only part you hear is God is good. So God is good. God is good. And in the head, things is good. Things are good. Things are good. So God is good. So what about when things are bad? How can you remain faithful with that God if you don't have roots? See, in when you have deep roots in the ground, when you are in, a, in the right place, you are stable. That's the, that's the only way. That's the reason some people, when you look at them, you say, how can they survive this? You know, you only, you only look up there. You see the storms. You see the situation they are facing. You see the problems. But what you don't know, you don't know the kind of roots that they have. You don't know where they're grounded. That's the reason you question somebody say, man, how can they survive these storms? I don't know how this person is making it. But you may see what they are facing up there. But if you could see the roots, you would realize that they are standing. They are standing firm. Yeah, yeah. They are standing because they have roots. Now the question is, are you in the right ground? Do you have roots that keep you going? Will you ever bear fruits? Or are you only going to remain greens for the rest of your life? You know, in the book of Psalm, it says, it says, it's a blessing for those who put their faith in the Lord. It says, they like, they like a, a, a tree that is planted by the riverside. And, and, and they will bear fruit in each in the season. What ground are you found yourself in? See, ground, it's not just say, oh, I'm, I'm founded in Jesus. No, 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 no not, not like that. The Bible said that God placed the five offices for the edification of the saints. The five offices, apostles, prophets, um, um, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Apostles, please follow. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. An apostle able to touch the prophet, prophetic anointing. The evangelist, pastor, and, and, and teacher. An apostle able to touch all those ground. It's, it's not that easy for the prophet or to touch those ground. The prophet likes to point his finger. Hey, you, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're wrong, you're this. You're this. See, the apostle is the foundation. Is the foundation. He founded everything. It's the foundation of all things. A church is founded upon an apostle. Apostle, you know, and 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 uh, a a pastor, a pastor may have an apostolic gift, 
And that's the reason I'm not saying it's wrong for a pastor to start a church. Because yes, a, past, a, 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 a pastor may function in the apostolic gift and can found a church. But what I'm saying is, for us to be grounded, God placed those five offices. You have to connect to the five offices. That's the only means for you to grow. And you have to be in the right position. There are people God placed an evangelist to help you. Some. Some, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an evangelist, some a pastor, some a prophet, some an apostle, some a teacher to help you. You have to find yourself connect in those ground, in one of those ground. Why? Because these people, they receive from God and then they're supposed to transmit into you. God respect order. He come and flow to these people and give to you. Yes, God will speak to everyone. There are things He come to you directly. There are things He talks to everybody directly. He talks to our so He talks. He can talk to anybody. He can talk to anybody. But what happen is there are things. If I'm gonna go somewhere, I'm gonna go somewhere, and there's a bus. There has to be a bus driver. These are your bus driver that is taking you somewhere in life. You need those bus driver if you're gonna go somewhere. Now, if you choose to get on your own car to drive by yourself, I'm telling you, God already give direction to some of these people for your life. Direction to some of these people for your life. And this pattern cannot be broken. That pattern cannot be broken. And that's how you're grounded. You have to find yourself there. That's the reason when Paul found himself under Damayel in the book of Acts chapter 22, it was... It, Paul wasn't doing anything. He couldn't become an apostle there. There is no way. Paul had to leave. Although Damaya was a great man. Although people were talking about him at that century. He was the man of the century. But yet, Paul had to leave him to find himself in the midst of Peter, James and, J and, James and John. Why? Paul said they seems to be the leader. They were leading Paul. Although, according to the, to, to, to the Pharisees, these people, they were uneducated. But Paul had to leave the educated men and to find himself next to this people in order for him to fulfill his mission. The Bible said the church was, was in prayer and they said, Let, we're going to release Paul and, Bar and Barabbas. They pray and pour oil on Paul and release Paul to his ministry. They release Paul. But yet, Damaniel couldn't do this for Paul. And the only reason we are learning so much from Paul, we understand so much, all because Paul left a great man and followed the fisherman instead. <laughs> Think about it. See, it's not who you follow. It's not about the title of who you follow. It's not about the status of the person you are following. It's not because that person is on TV, that person write this book, and that person is, is doing this. It's about where God wants you to be. People of God, this is the honest truth. It's not about my church, this church, that church. It's about where God wants you to be. Because wherever God wants you to be, you will find yourself bearing fruit. You will find yourself becoming different of the person you were yesterday. You find yourself seeing things in another perspective. You find yourself understanding things in a higher perspective. You find yourself impacting people's life. You find people start talking about you. They say, how come so-and-so is different now? How come so-and-so talk different about the Bible now? How come so-and-so understanding things different ways now? See, you will bear this kind of fruit. People will have testimony about you. They will say you change. They will say, man, how come she has so much knowledge? How come he understand the Bible this way now? It's all because... Of the ground where you found it. Ground, it means a lot. The ground means, it means a lot. If you're in church, you're in church, and you have nothing to show in your spiritual life, check your ground. Check your ground. I was in church for a long, long time. To the point that we used to play 50 cents. Oh yes, I, loved, I used to love going to church in Boca Raton. True story. This church was in Boca Raton. We used to make the pastor drive, leave his house, come and open the church for us. So we have to practice on Saturday night. 
And then what, 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 what are we practicing? 50 cents. We are practicing 50, 50 cents. You know, it, uh, and Nelly, it's getting hard in here. You know, we are, we are playing those songs. We learn it the, way, the right way. And then when you come to church on Sunday, we had this pastor. He used to do this long prayer for 15 minutes. And we love when he does this prayer. And by the time he starts praying, nobody can hear nothing because we we on we Nelly. We are playing all kind of crazy songs. And then you see the pastor, oh yes, it's, it's good. The anointing is good. The 50 cents anointing is good in the house. So that's, that's what we are doing. By the time they give the mic to the preacher, we are out of there. We are out of there. We are, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, um, Wendy's. There's a Wendy's across the street. We just sit at Wendy's. We are talking. And we give, we give a, you know, one of those kids one dollar. We give the child one dollar. See, whenever you see they're about to finish, whenever they're about to finish, come and call us. And when, when service is about to be over, the preacher is almost done. And that, the, the kid come and call us. Say, hey, the pastor is almost done. Pastor is almost done. And we run back to church. We run back and then like a scent. We show him back like a scent. And all we are playing is all kind of crazy songs. You name the world the songs we used to play it in church. I, I used to love to go for that. I used to go. Oh, I love to go. Just to play all kind of crazy songs. And then we, we used to laugh. And you will see all the young people. They, young people used to love to come to the church just for that. And, and then sometimes they have requests. They'll be texting the request. Oh, can you guys play this song? Can you play that new song that just come out? Oh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. And if we don't know the song yet, we can play it yet. We say next Sunday. And next Sunday, they show up to church. And then we, with the phones. And then we start playing it. And then you see them. Oh, yeah. Everybody's jamming in the church. Everybody's jamming. And even the pastor went. The pastor is jamming. <laughs> the pastor is jamming. But they don't know what's going on. I wasn't bearing the fruits. I wasn't bearing the fruits. I, was, I don't know why I was there. I don't know what I was doing. I, don't need to, I didn't need to pray. I was just there. My mom sometimes forced me. I go. And I love to play music. I love to play my 50 cents, my Nelly. I go. That's the only reason I went. But there was no purpose. There was nothing personal between me and Christ. There was nothing. I wasn't trying to follow, find a path or anything. There was no ground. No ground. Yeah. It becomes a habit. On Sunday, we go to church. That's it. That's the only thing. I go. I just go. But I wasn't founded in any ground. Spiritually, there was nothing here. There was nothing. There was nothing. Until one day, I changed my ground. I changed my ground and my life changed. <laughs> I think I think you should catch the message here. I changed my ground and then my life changed. Changed my ground. My whole life changed. Some of you, your struggle to bear fruits, your struggle to grow, you can grow in that ground. There's a certain ground you are at. That ground is limited. The ground, there's nothing there. There's no juice, no water there. Nothing is there for you to suck and for you to grow. The place you want to be, the dream you have, it's not in the ground. The desire you have, there's no anointing in the ground. There's nothing here in this ground for you to go that place you want to be. The way you feel like God wants to carry you. The thing you thought you think you could you want to accomplish, but for some reason you don't know how to do it. There's nothing in this ground. If there's nothing there, you know, as a human, you may have friends, family, but are you going to suffocate your own life and stick in this dead ground? I wouldn't say dead ground. Or in the wrong ground, suffocate your own life. Your own life for people. Would you do that? Some of us are doing it. You're suffocating, suffocating your life. Then yet people are complaining. You know, right? Nothing is going for me. You know, you know, I thought guys went to use me. I had a dream. Of course, you had a dream. But that dream cannot be fulfilled in this ground. 
See, so no one can care. We'll, we'll, nobody should care more for your life than you. If you don't care about your own self. See, there are people when I sit and talk to them. And I remember I spoke to a young lady. And I explained to her. She didn't tell me anything. I told her. She said, how did you know all these things? I said, the Holy Spirit shared it with me. I said, can I tell you what you don't know as well? She said, yes. I said, this is what he said with me. He told me, you are in the wrong ground. That's the only reason. That thing you prayed about, that thing you wrote down, that thing I told you about, that's the only reason they are not coming to pass. And you know what the young lady said to me? She said, but my family is in the church. You know, sometimes I help in the church. I do this in the church. I said, that's all you're going to do for the rest of your life then. That's all you're going to do. The prayer requests you wrote down, the things you said you would want to do, it's impossible. It's impossible for Paul to become an apostle if he stick with Damaliel. If he wanted to be famous, let him stick with Damaliel. If Paul want people to know him, he should stick with Damaliel. If Paul want them to give him a great name because he had a great mentor, let him stick with Damaliel. But if Paul want to fulfill his destiny, he had to leave and follow the un uneducated men. The people they said they never went to school. The people that they said that, you know, they don't go to school, they don't know nothing. He had to follow them. Now, what is your choice today? Do you care about your personal life? Do you care about who you're supposed to be? Do you care about where you're going to be? You know, one regret I have in my life, and I said, and I said it always. My only regret, I realize that certain things, it takes time to understand them. Certain things, it takes time to build them. Certain things, it takes time to get there. It's like ingredient after ingredient that becomes something within me. So my only regret is that I started too late. If I had started 5, 10 years earlier than when I started, I would have been further today. I would have learned so much more. I would have accomplished so much more. See, time. I have to, I'm waiting on time. Because there are seconds, there are minutes, there are hours, there are days. I have to wait on time to process things, to learn. Because who you're going to be is based on your knowledge. Knowledge equal, your li equal to your life. What you know is what, who you are. See, it takes me time to learn things. Sometimes I'm trying to learn things. I cannot understand them. And I have to keep on learning more. And, and, and in time, is not helping me out. And, and my only regret is... If I had started when I was playing 50 cents, if I had changed my ground then, I would have learned more then. And, or, or maybe way before that, if I had started way before that, there's so much more I probably would have been accomplishing right now. See, some of us, that's my regret. But you're still stuck in that ground. You're still stuck in that, in that ground. Think about it. There's a time for a tree, a tree gets to a point of life. You cannot take the tree out of the roots no, anymore. I mean, in, in the ground no more. If that tree is too big, it's impossible to take it off that ground. Although the tree is in the wrong ground, the only thing you can do for this tree, if you want to do that, that tree justice, leave it in that ground. It's too old. If that tree gets too old, it's impossible to take it out of the ground. Don't allow yourself to get to that point. When you get too old, and although you know this is wrong, but you have to be there. Because taking yourself out, you will kill yourself. Don't get to that point of life. When you get too old, when you get too old that you cannot change ground, although you know there's nothing here for me, there's no life in this ground, but yet you cannot change nothing about your life anymore. Because you're already too old to make changes now. <laughs> Some of us, we're working towards that age. We're working towards that, that point of life. If you don't do what you're supposed to do now. See, certain every decision has a consequence. It will hurt you as a person. When Paul made the decision to leave Damaliel, it hurt as a person. When you leave someone that is very famous... As Damaniel, people will say, you are stupid. You were with Damaniel. He was on TV every day. He used to take you to the TV station with him. 
He used to allow you to speak on the radio. People know you know about you because of him. And now you just leave him? It hurts. But Paul would never know what he could have accomplished. I would not be reading about Paul today. I would never be reading about his books today in the Bible if Paul didn't make these decisions. It requires certain decisions. And I have a message that I preach. Something got to be given if you have to get something. Something got to be given. <laughs> One day I'll preach this message, message to you. Something got to be given. You have to be... See, life is a market of trade. That's life. A market of trade. Spiritually, naturally, it's a market of trade. Everything got to trade. I want this, you have to give this. I want a car, you have to give money. I want God to move, you have to pray. I want to grow spiritually, I have to give my time into fasting and prayer. Something got to be given. And the more you give, the more you're able to receive back. <laughs> That's life. Paul had to give. He has to give this part of his life in order to gain something greater. And, 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 and please understand this. It's not something that he knew. It's not like he knew there was a picture that something that tell him, hey Paul, you're going to be great, a great apostle. No. It's not like he knows already. But he had to bet on his life because he felt like that he wasn't growing. He wasn't growing as he was supposed to be. And Paul changed his ground. He grounded with the apostles. And Paul became a great apostle. See, my message for everyone that is listening to me today, where are you grounded? Do you have roots? Are you just a seed that falls along in the side path? You know, just, you're just there in the pathway. People will stamp over you. They will walk on you. Are you on the thorny, thorny ground? Someday something will suffocate you. In the thorny ground, it's a competition. You're trying to grow, but there's so many bad things around you. They'll destroy you. I believe bad outweigh the good. <laughs> Try to grow in the midst of these things. There's no way. Or in the rocky ground, you may look so beautiful, very beautiful. You may look so green in people's eyes, but not knowing there's no way you'd never bear fruits because there's no roots in the ground. Under you only rocks. There's too many things that is blocking your ways in that ground. And some of us, that's how we find ourselves. And I'm telling you the honest truth, people of God. If you're listening to me or watching me on Facebook, your life is more important than anything you can think of. Than any friends, any friendship, relationship, whatever ship. Your life is more important than any one of them. Take care of yourself. You only have one life to live. One purpose to pursue. And there's a ground you got to be. At all costs, Make sure you find yourself in this ground to grow, to get where you need to be, to bear the fruits you need to bear, to bear the fruits. There's nothing more beautiful than seeing a mango tree full of mangoes and that people are eating and they say, oh my God, this is pretty, this is nice. The sweetness of your mango. Some of you, you have a decision to make in this life. It has nothing to do with family. It has nothing to do with friends. It has nothing to do with no one. It's about you. It's about you. It's about you. I pray that everyone received this message today. I was supposed to have a Bible study, but I'd rather teach this. I believe it will bless somebody. I believe that it will help someone to get somewhere in this life. I will leave this message. I won't delete this message. So I pray that someone catch this word. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray with you. 
Praise God. I want to pray with you that God help you for you to be in the right ground and for you to bear the fruits that you need to be. Remember, if there's no connection somewhere, there's no fruits. Every tree in the ground has to flow. The roots has to flow deep within in order for you to stand firm. See, when you're on the right ground, you're not worried about situations because situations cannot shake you. Even if situations take, take your top off, even if your top come off, it's not a problem. You still have roots. You will grow again. You will even grow more prettier than before. See, problems is not an issue to someone with roots. Problem is not an issue for Paul. Because the Bible said the church, he was being persecuted. Paul was being persecuted. It was, it was no problem. The Bible said to the point they said, Paul, if you go to Rome, this is how you're going to die. Paul said, it's okay, that's fine. See, death wasn't an issue to him. But fulfilling the destiny was because he had ground then. He becomes something. He becomes someone with a purpose. See, there's nothing more beautiful when you're walking in your purpose. A person walking in purpose is like a, a, a fish swimming in water. Have you ever watched a, a fish sw swimming in water? For some reason, when we go to the mall, to certain places, you know, they put some tanks there. And then, and then for some reason, even if you're in a hurry, and when you look at those fish swimming, and then you just want to stand, stop, and just look at them. They're so beautiful. See, the fish, because they're doing what they do best, they take your attention, captivate your attention, to the point that people stop just to watch the fish in water. Something you already know, fish swim in water. But you see the fish swimming, by the time you see the fish swimming, although you know that's what they need to do, and you stop just to look at them. It's, oh my God, it's beautiful. Seeing them just swimming around. Just a small tank. You're watching just a fish in a small tank. That can take your attention for hours, for minutes. You know why? Because fish is in its domain. The fish is where it's supposed to be. When you are where you're supposed to be, your life becomes this light that attract people even when they were busy in life, they want to stop and watch you. They just want to stop, oh my God. Look at so-and-so. I want to be like so-and-so. They just want to be like you. They just want to do you. They just want to be like, feel like, man, I, I want to do my hair like so-and-so. I want to do my beard like Apostle Jean. <laughs> so, they just want to be like so-and-so. Because when you are in your right position, you find yourself. It's like you become beautiful. Not because you, meet, you don't meet problems. Not because you don't face situations. But even when you're facing the situation, you don't worry about it. People still look at look to you. They still want to be you because you look beautiful when you are in the right ground. Or I declare over someone, may God place you in the right position, in the right ground in the name of Jesus. I speak over someone's life today in the name of Jesus. May your life become beautiful. May things change for you. May God take you in places that you never dreamed of. May your fruits attract millions, thousands of people everywhere just to come and see you, just to come and see your fruits. I declare this over your life. You will not be a tree that is waste, that is taking ground, that is wasting ground. You will be one that is taking care of its ground, that is growing, and that is attracting people and giving them fruits. I speak these words over your life today in the name of Jesus. And for those who are in the right ground, may God lead you. To be in where you're supposed to be. For those who find themselves confused in this life. They don't know if they will make it or not. I speak of your destiny today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May God help you to be established in this life. May things change for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray this over your life today in Jesus name. I pray that you were blessed by this word on today. I pray that this word will change your life. I pray that things will change for you after today. I pray that you see things in another perspective. I pray that you check your ground to understand. And please remember, even if you're on the right ground, there are some that bear 100, some they bear 60, some they bear 30. Even if you're on the right ground, we still bear different fruits based on our nature.
<laughs> Think about it. Even when we find ourselves in the right ground, some still bear 100, some 60, some 30. Understand this. Imagine if you're not in the right ground. Even in the right ground, sometimes you don't bear 100. <laughs> what if you're not in the right ground? Jesus cursed the fig tree because it's looking good. People of God, don't look at someone's life or what you see on the outside and believe they're making it. It's not true. It's the roots that count. It's the roots that count. Always remember Paul. Although the life of Paul, it was looking good because he had a great mentor. He had a man that was well known. But Paul wasn't making it anyway. As a matter of fact, Paul became greater than Damayel because he went and found his path. You want to be great in this life, you have to be in the right path. See, don't ever see things, titles, or see people that they said this about him, or he knows president so-and-so, or he knows so-and-so, or he get this connection. This connection that's for so-and-so, it's not for you. See, Damayel is for Damayel, but it's not for you. You have your own ground to be. You have your own position to be. They may, know the, they may know the president, but does that mean you know the president as well? What is that going to do for you? They may be on TV. That's them that's be on TV. What is that going to do for you? What is, how is that going to help you there on TV? You, you're just going to brag about it every day? So what about you? What about your life? What about what you need to fulfill? What about the things you need to do? See, it's not about what your mentor or so-and-so is doing. It's about you. Are you in the right ground? Then if you're in the right ground, the person is famous, good for them. Good for you. But if you're not in the right ground, you have to be in the right ground. If you're not, you find yourself do like I did. Go to church playing 50 cents. You may go for a boy, you may go for a girl. That might be the only reason you'll go to church. Or you may go for your best friend. For friends, for family. But you will never bear fruits yourself. You will only go for other reasons. Because we all do things for different reasons in this life. We all do things for different reasons in this life. What is your reason? Are you in the right ground? What is your reason of being in church? What is your reason for even being in this prayer line right now? Think about it. What is your motive? What is behind your head for, li for probably reading this title and then say, I'm going, I want to see what he has to say? What is your motive? What are you going to do about it? You know what I've learned in this life? Every time you hear something, something prod productive, if you don't act the same moment, if you don't do something the same minute, most likely you'll not do nothing about it after that. As soon as you hear something, if you don't do something, Scripture says it, says it better than me. That if you hear if, if his voice today, do not delay. <laughs> because tomorrow is not promising. That's what the Bible says. See, there are things you hear today. If you don't do something about it at the same moment, most likely you would not do anything at all. Why? Because the desire, the eager, the heat, the fire, the, 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 the feeling of doing something is down. And as you procrastinate, the feeling goes down to the point that it, that the feeling dies. And this is what you're hearing today. If you hear it again, it's not going to touch you at all. It will touch someone else. But you, <laughs> you're done with this. You don't worry about that no more. That's what happened to so many of us. We are hearing things. We are hearer of the word and not doer of the words. And because we become hearer of the words and not doer of the words, and our lives become stagnant, words cannot change us no more. <laughs> we we immune to words. Words cannot affect our lives anymore. There are people like that. You can preach all you want. They hear too many words. That's what the Bible said, Hebrew. What is it? Hebrew, Hebrew 4, Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew 4, 6, 4. It says, it is impossible. Impossible. When someone been enlightened, someone that see the glory of God, that experience certain things, and for that person to fall, the Bible said it's impossible to bring that person back. <laughs> impossible. 
See, there's a certain level you allow yourself to get. They are people, words cannot affect them anymore. Nothing you say can touch them. Because they cooked in the mindset. They cooked in what they believe. Just as I mentioned, that tree is too old. The mindset is get, gets too old. And even if they don't see fruits, and they feel like this is where I belong, and they belong there for the rest of their lives. And these are the people that will never know what they could have achieved, what they could have done in this lifetime. I pray that you're not one of these people. I pray that you're one that is fi finding your way in the name of Jesus. May this be your portion. May God help you. May God help things to happen for you. I pray that one day that you, people, will testify about your life. Will say that so-and-so blessed me. That there are things going on in so-and-so life. I want to be like this. I want to be like that. I pray that this is your portion. That you will achieve things in this life. You will do great things in this life. That your name will be remembered for more than three generations. For more than three generations. Or I said your name will be remembered for more than three generations. Hmm. Think about it. Some of you, if you live right now, will you be remembered? For how many generations? May your name be remembered for more than three generations. In the name of Jesus. May God help you to fulfill something that from generation to generation, that the same way, the same way, you see, until today, we're still talking about Abraham, a man of faith, for what he has done. How many generations has this it been since Abraham? And we're still talking about this man. May your name be remembered from generation to generations. May your name never dies in this lifetime and the next one to come. I speak over your life in the name of Jesus. May you fulfill the purpose, what God has called you to do. The same way Abraham found his purpose. That he found that he was a man of faith. A man that is scared to take risk. To even try to kill his own son. May you find your own. And that your name will be remembered. That when they mention your name. That people will see that thing that you achieve in this life. May you find yourself in the ground. That things will be happening for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May this prayer impact your life. May things change for you. In Jesus name. God bless you everybody. Thank you for taking part of this prayer. Thank you for being part of this Facebook Live or the prayer line. I pray that this word impact your life and make you look at life in certain other ways in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I said it is well with you. It is well. It is well. Remember, when you hear certain words, act according to the word. Act. Do something about it. Do something about what you hear. Do something now, not tomorrow. Don't wait for tomorrow. It'll be too late. You will not feel the same way you feel today about the word tomorrow. That's the reason you do it today. You start making plans today, right now, as the word is still hot. And I speak over your life that this word will not die. May it lives inside of you until you find, until you fulfill this part of the life. In the name of Jesus. God bless you guys. Thank you, thank you, and have a great night. Stay dry if you're in Florida. Stay dry if you're in Florida. And we, we thank God. We thank God. Let's put it that way. You don't have to spend money in washing your cars. We all have a car wash this week. So we praise the name of God for this. Everybody have a beautiful car. Your car stay washed. So we praise God for this. I look at my car. It was beautiful. And I paid nothing for this. So God bless people in Florida. We don't pay for car wash this week. So God bless you guys. Thank you for following. Stay dry. And uh, oh, there's somebody say here too. Sister Matt. Oh, it rain, it's raining in Boston too, so I guess everybody's getting free car wash. So we thank God for this moment. We pray that angels use soaps and, 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 and all kind of things to wash our cars. May the inside of your car be washed as well. <laughs> so we thank, we thank God. We praise God. Yes. You always have to look at the bright side, right? Always have to see the bright side. There's something good about this. So God bless you guys. And I have these ladies. I don't know what's wrong with them. Uh. <laughs> See you at church. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, bye guys. Bye.
Alright. Church name? Good night, good night. You went on live?